Now look, we're all waiting for the next Nintendo Direct or a Nintendo Switch 2 reveal or even Nintendo just to drop some Twitter stuff out there, right? We do know some upcoming dates right now. April 25th is when previews are going to be dropping for the Thousand Year Door, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, maybe Nintendo's most anticipated game at the moment. And on top of that, we know the reviews are dropping on May 21st. Now this is due to Tom Henderson, who... My lord, is he becoming a super reliable insider, and he really has been for a long time. He put those dates out on Twitter, just letting people know, uh, hey, that stuff's usually not necessarily under NDA. People just don't really talk about it, but he's letting people know, hey, previews are coming in about a week, and we're going to get reviews. That's cool. Well, we just also had a five-minute trailer drop for Endless Ocean Luminous, and Really, when you're watching this video, some of you might have been looking forward to a VG News episode that we were supposed to have. Haven't been feeling the greatest, have enough pep in my step for this video. So we're going to get this one out right now and we'll see what happens for the rest. Because here's the bottom line. What is happening right now with Nintendo is not only unprecedented for the Nintendo Switch era save 2020. What is happening right now is... The Nintendo fan community seems to be, at least online, collectively losing our minds, right? I'm part of that community. Now, what am I talking about? The incessant negativity is overtaking the comment sections on videos all over YouTube, on social media platforms, not just X where people often associate negativity. I'm seeing it on Instagram. I'm seeing it on TikTok even. I'm even seeing individual content creators being pretty negative on Nintendo. Now, we're not just talking about their takes on the indie world, which, look, the indie world was a thing that Nintendo did, and I thought it was solid. I didn't think it was the greatest indie world ever, uh, not for my personal taste anyways, but I do think that it wasn't bad or anything. It was par for the course for an indie world. It met my expectations for what I suspect every indie world to be, and I actually saw some people say, that it actually exceeded their expectations because it gave them things they want to play, which is a good thing. But unfortunately, a lot of that's being drowned out by constant negativity around Nintendo. And I think I know what some of it stems from. Uh, for starters, if you are a big Nintendo fan that likes Nintendo's best of their best games, there is a possibility that if Tears of the Kingdom didn't do it for you last year, it's been a while since Nintendo's released a game that does do it for you. Now, look, I like Super Mario Bros. Wonder, but I know that side-scrolling Mario isn't for every Nintendo fan, especially some of the hardcore ones online. And if Tears of the Kingdom was a letdown for you, yeah, it's been a while since Nintendo's probably given you a big home run game. But even setting that aside... Nintendo has now gone seven months without giving us a general Nintendo Direct. And beyond all of that, just thinking about this from an, a logical perspective, Nintendo has a ton of internal and owned studios that they could announce games from. The last game Nintendo announced that is actually from one of their own studios was Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Let that sink in. We have had a game come out nearly every single month this year, but we only know of none <laughs> that were actually made by Nintendo themselves. Now, look, we can argue this is pretty typical for an end of a generation. Lots of ports and remasters. Look what they did with 3DS, although they still had some new games. And technically, hey, we have two new games this year in Princess Peach Showtime and Endless Ocean Luminous. And I'm not going to sit here, Luminous, whatever. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you can't enjoy those games and look forward to Endless Ocean. And obviously, you know, a, a much beloved franchise coming back with, well, not really a franchise coming back, but much beloved game coming back in Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. But what I am throwing out there is we are in a transition period. It's never been more obvious to me that we're in a transition period. No traditional direct partner showcase, indie showcase, uh, no big games technically announced beyond Metro Prime 4, and even then, that's not announced or confirmed for this year. Nothing's really happening in the space at the moment to really get you pepped up, really get you excited, really get the juices flowing, unless you're just really excited about these smaller or remaster-like releases that they're putting out. And again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're wrong for being excited. What I am going to say is there's a lot of negativity, and 
I just want to address some of this negativity as every console, every system, every platform, I feel like has its periods of lull. And I, I think with Switch, we've been spoiled because Nintendo has been able to put their best foot forward for the almost the entire generation because Nintendo literally has all of their game development focused on a single platform. But here's the thing when all their game development is focused on a single platform. When Nintendo's ready to move to the next platform and they got to start shifting game development to it, there's kind of a stark cutoff of what games are being made for the current Switch and what games are being for the next. You know why an internal studio Nintendo game has not been announced since Super Mario Bros. Wonder? Because it's highly likely every single internal studio is working on games for Nintendo Switch 2. Now that does mean Nintendo Switch 2 will have this incredible support over the next five, six, seven years. But that also means in order to have that incredible support, especially out the gate, they have to stop making games for Switch. Now, again, this isn't saying Nintendo's not publishing and putting out games, but look at the lineup. It's not something that is you know, costing Nintendo a lot of money. There's no big games. These are smaller games. They didn't take as long. Even the uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door Remaster, which looks like it had a lot of care put into it. Let's just be honest. That game wasn't in development for years on end and costed Nintendo a lot of money. No, it was probably something that could have been done maybe even in a year with an outside studio. So this is just one of those things where Nintendo is in a transition. And we are not used to Nintendo only having a single platform. And the only other companies that were rocking single platforms for a long time were things like Xbox and PlayStation. And we know that Xbox has just struggled to get out exclusive content forever. But PlayStation was doing the opposite of what Nintendo is doing. See, Nintendo, while they're getting games out and making sure we have stuff to actually play, they're not getting any big games out. Sony, as a single platform holder, would always end their generations often with their best games, their best foot forward. So that final year of PlayStation is usually really phenomenal and really exciting to look forward to. But then the launch year for the next PlayStation isn't as exciting. In fact, things typically don't get super exciting until the end of year two and going into year three of a PlayStation system, at least when it comes to exclusive content. Again, there's obviously third-party games and all of that. And look, we still have Indian third-party games here on Switch to play. So it's not like there's literally nothing to play. I just installed Grounded on my Switch I plan to check out this weekend. But my thing is, we as Nintendo fans are not used to Nintendo not having things come out. Even during the Wii U era, when that was going bad, if there wasn't a big Wii U game, we still had 3DS games coming. And even when we were transitioning over to the, you know, Nintendo Switch thing, we still had the obvious NES Classic coming out, and we also had 3DS games. So Nintendo having everything and all their eggs in one basket does mean that we are probably, and I think we've hit that point now, going to hit a point that Nintendo Switch support was basically going to stop, almost hard stop, from Nintendo's internal studios. I think the one of the last games, and maybe the final game that's actually going to land on Switch from an internal studio from Nintendo, is probably Metroid Prime 4. I think that's sort of a consensus that they promised it as a Switch game in 2017. It's still going to be delivered as a Switch game. It just might also be a cross-generational game. So that is like the outside shot game that could still come this year and just be on Switch if Switch 2 is not here. But I do find it fascinating that that's it, and that's a game that technically has already been announced. That's why I said nothing's been announced since Mario Wonder because that game was technically announced in 2017. I think we need to take a step back and breathe a little bit. We need to fundamentally look at this situation as an opportunity. What are we talking about? Well, if you are a single platform holder and you only own a Switch, that is the only thing you have to game on, and that's fine. There's probably millions and millions, tens of millions of you. What I will say is dive into that deep library of the Switch. There's such a massive backlog, and I don't want to hear if you are an avid Nintendo fan that you don't have a backlog of games you haven't finished yet. Now's the time to do it. Go into that bat law. Maybe you never beat Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Maybe you're still waiting to beat Xenoblade Chronicles 2 or 3. Maybe you've been waiting for excuses to go play Octopath Traveler 2 or you know Triangle Strategy or whatever. There, there's such a deep library of content on Switch. 
Use this year as the year to really get that back catalog polished off before we get to what's next. That's my suggestion for some of uh, you hardcore Switch fans that don't really play anything else. If you are also somebody that does have other systems, maybe you own an Xbox or a PlayStation or you have a gaming computer, well, now's the time to really take some of that gaming energy you're often throwing at Nintendo and start being excited about the things that are happening on other platforms. There's other big, exciting games coming from these other companies that we should really look for. I mean, Stellar Blade, as an example, dropping on PlayStation 5 soon. So I'm just pointing out there's, there's other things out there to be excited about, and you can go and play that stuff, and you don't need to feel guilty about doing that. Enjoy it. Gaming is for you. It's not about the platform. So you can go do that as well if you're someone who's fortunate, like I am, to own other platforms. So I think that now is the time to really just appreciate what we already have, what's coming to other systems, and be a little patient with Nintendo. And I know it's infuriating. Look, we've been infuriated with Nintendo many, many times over the decades because they're kind of weird with their communications. They don't always communicate when we think we should. We may or may not get some Switch 2 related stuff at the financial briefing in May. Uh, we may or may not hear about Switch 2 at all this year. We may or may not have a Nintendo Direct, you know, sometime in the next few months. But what we can do is be patient. What we can do is enjoy what we already have because I think sometimes we're always so looking forward to what's next. And yes, I am one of those people that we sometimes forget to live in the present and appreciate what we already have and take advantage of that opportunity. That isn't going to change the fact that you're frustrated Nintendo hasn't had a Nintendo Direct. It's not going to change that you're frustrated. There's no major internal games, you know, besides Metroid Prime 4 currently announced for Switch. It's not going to change your frustration that you're ready for Switch 2. You're ready for Nintendo games and higher resolutions and 60 FPS and better graphics and physics and all of that stuff. It's not going to change that you guys are just ready. I mean, Eric, my best friend, who literally is the co-host of the podcast, has been saying for two years now that he has an original launch switch and he's just been ready for that next gen switch for a little bit now he's like i don't want to buy the oled i want to buy that because i want something that's more powerful something that's going to make my games run better and i understand that sentiment but i think we need to calm down on the anger i'm seeing a lot of vitriol uh you know hollow knight silk song as an example not being at the indie world now i'm seeing people go and attack team cherry because they're mad because that announcement could have saved nintendo as if nintendo is in any danger and needs to be saved Nintendo's a multi-billion dollar company making money hand over fist they're doing just fine and as if we needed as gamers to have that game there to give us something to be excited for for switch meanwhile it's also going to be on xbox and playstation I think that we need to just take a step back, smile a little more. I'm not going to tell you to go touch grass or stuff like that because a lot of you guys already work manual labor jobs and you're outside and doing stuff and you children and all that all the time. And some places it's really cold, some places it's really hot. I'm just going to say take care of your mental well-being. It's okay to just not be angry over video games. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not having stuff coming can be frustrating, and I get that firsthand. But also... Guys, come on. We've had it pretty damn good this generation. Go play that back catalog. Go play games on other platforms. Relax a little bit. Give Nintendo time. And you know what? If they announce the next platform or the next Direct and the next platform looks like crap and it looks like it's going to suck, bad name, no games, uh, the next Direct's out, fine. We could talk about that stuff when it happens. But for right now, let's be a little patient, okay? Unless you obviously have specific reasons that you can't be and if that's the case uh, i'm really sorry for what you're going through and i hope for the best thank you for being here and i'll catch you in the next video